people all my life, and that's what I've been doing for many, many years. They said that media is a very scary place. It's mysterious, don't get there. And here I am, happy-go-lucky, saying, no, it's actually cool. You should get it there, and you should consider it. So I was born in 1966. That's just about 46 years ago. And I was born right there in the island of Crete, right there, uh, back in Greece. I'm Greek. Um, don't have much to do with the economy, but anyway. Yeah, um, and then I start wandering around the world and I came to this part of the world back in 1997. So in all my life, um, I've, I've, I've tried to remember where I came from. I was born in this village actually. That is the actual picture of where I was born. And life back then, in 1966, was very, very different. The first time I watched TV, I was nine. Before that, I had no idea what a TV was, yeah? So life back then, it was very, 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 very different, and I would never imagine would, what I would have become as a professional, right? Um, just about 46 years later. So I've lived and worked in many different countries. I was born and worked in Greece. I studied in the States. In 1997, I went to Japan. I stayed there for five years. I got married there. I got my son in Taiwan, and I made Malaysia my home with my family back in 2006. So I've been around this, this long and I've worked in different places with different companies in different cultures and ethnicities. And in that absolutely brilliant journey that I truly cherish, I see that the fundamentals don't really change. Um, and the, the, the afternoon today and the speakers before me um, truly managed to touch a couple of really hot buttons that I think you need to consider when you are finishing up your studies and when you're considering getting a job. And I'll come back to that also. Why did a village boy choose media? That's really the question a lot of people ask me. So I'm going to tell you my story. I really liked a structured expression of creativity. I didn't really know it by the, back, back then. But now when I try to think what happened, that's what I can decipher. Jeff, I'm not a copywriter, but that's what I think it was, really. Um, a structured expression of creativity. Keep that in mind. Above all, I really like people. I like to work with people. And living in a small community back in the village, it was all about people. It was all about people staying together, supporting each other, and sharing. And that stayed with me throughout. My dream was, when I was in school, to get to the math university of Athens. That was like the best thing anybody could get, and I did. Absolutely did, and I loved math. I loved math and geometry, sorry, uh, because it was giving me that structure and allowed me the creativity to solve problems. But as soon as I went there, I hated it. I just hated the guts out of it. And so, after a motorcycle accident that I watched a lot of ads, I realized that that's what I wanted to do. So I went to the States to study advertising. I still didn't know what media was all about until I got a basic course on media from that crazy professor, Kent Lancaster. If you Google him, he's still alive. God bless him. <laughs> and that's when the penny dropped. That's what I thought, my goodness, that's what I really want to do for the rest of my life. And that's indeed what I've been doing ever since media, media planning, and all that has to do with media. So my quest was to become the hottest media planner in the face of the planet. But I have a bit of a problem explaining what I do for a living ever since, because different things mean different things to different people. So I have a hard time explaining on what my friends think I do, on what my <laughs> clients think I do, on what the media owners think I do, what my parents think I do, what I think I do and what I actually do. Very, very split personality. So with that, what is media? If that's something, if my hypnosis worked and if you really uh, want to consider that, what is media? If you take any basic course, and I'm sure you have if you are communication majors in media, they're going to tell you all sorts of stuff about reach, frequency, efficiency, effectiveness, GRPs, TARPs, ratings, impressions, and all that sort of thing. They will even give you formulas to learn. And they will tell you lots of stuff that is very, very structured and seem to be very mathematical and numbers oriented. A lot of analysis and research. I'll tell you what media is not. 
And media is not math, is not formulas, is not all that jargon. It is not putting crosses in boxes, Jeff. It's not a backroom job and it's not an administrative room that really links to finance because the truth is that we basically manage all the advertising expenditure. Currently, it sits at 11 billion ringgit in Malaysia that goes through our hands. We need to invest that. But we are not that finance room that really manages the budget. We are way more than that. So what are we? What is media? Media is the engine room for great media ideas that really work in tandem, hand in hand, from the beginning, with a creative development. Media is the one to determine what is the right budget, what is the right target audience? Because you know what? You can create the best advertising in the world, and if you choose the wrong vehicles to put it through, you will not reach your consumer, so you are going to fail. And at the same time, how you activate that big idea into the real connection time with the consumer is where media steps in. So everything that you've heard today about creativity, about strategy, about account planning, even copywriting, has to be driven hand in hand with the media development from the beginning. The old model was, and I lived through that in New York when I was working there, seriously, it was the guys would do a TV ad and a newspaper ad and a magazine ad, and after all the things were done and dusted, they would come to me, literally, the media planner, and they would say, make me a TV plan. Meaning, how many spots am I going to put in which channel, and that was it. Digital didn't exist by then. At all. We didn't even have email. I used to do plans on a typewriter, believe it or not, with wipeout, if you do a mistake. And the secretary would have to type it and fax it. Do you know what teletext is? Yeah, have you seen a teletext machine with these cards that have holes in it? And it goes to, 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 and then the message passes across. That's how it used to operate. Not anymore. Media is all the way from the beginning, in the beginning, and controls the audience selection as well as how everything is deployed. And the media planner's role is all of this stuff. It's quite exciting, in fact, and I do agree that the way the marketing environment has increased to become is truly giving you an opportunity to find your niche and excel. The media planner has to research well, has to invest wisely, has to have a critical mind, has to have an analytical skill to understand what people do. It's all about people. The numbers can come easy and the computers and the analysts can do that. But the idea and the strategy comes fundamentally from an understanding of society, an understanding of what is happening in the world. And if we can't do that, we cannot really be good media planners. Sounds like a superhero job because even though the other disciplines of advertising are a little bit more focused and specialized, this one is more um, multitudinal, so to speak. And I can guarantee you, if you will, you will work in a, an advertising agency, correct me if I'm wrong, but most of the times, if something goes wrong, the media. Go ask the media. Go ask the media. The media's fault. The media didn't plan it well. I haven't really heard anything that the creative was not done properly. It was always the media thing. So you've got to be a superhero to really manage that. And in order to manage that, you have to have fantastic people skills. You have to have fantastic connections within the agency and with the partners that really try to drive the process and drive the outcome and drive that big idea, right? It's a love affair. I think everybody talked about that. And by the way, I didn't edit one bit of this. I just deleted a couple of slides to make it shorter. It's a love affair. And if you don't love what you're just about to do, who you're doing it with, where you're doing it at, and for what brand you're doing it for, don't do it. Choose to do something that you really love and be good at it. It's OK to try, but if you invest the time, I think Sean put it very, very well. Be excited about it. Passion is very critical if you really want to succeed. What I like about the job that I'm doing every day, I like all of these things. First and foremost, I love working with people. It can be headachy a lot of times, and you have a lot of grumpy people to deal with, be it clients or colleagues. 
But that's what we are, right? We are in the people business. And the challenge is to solve these problems and really understand that. Um, problem solving is really a challenge always, but something that keep it, keeps you on your toes all the time. It really adds the spice, the sugar, the pepper, the salt on everything that you do. And it really makes our job absolutely fun and interesting. In my particular case, I truly enjoyed being international, traveling and working with different cultures in different countries. Uh, I'm not planning to go anywhere anymore, but I had my share fair. And I think that many of you might be also from an international background. And in fact, today we had speakers who are not Malaysians, like me. Yet, look what is happening. We live in an internationally connected village. It's not boundaries and countries and ethnicities anymore. And it's all about always learning and creating and adapting. And that creative thinking that really pushes you to thrive. What was it? Flow? and all that, all that stuff was great. It's absolutely the case. I never have a boring day, I can tell you that. And like Sean put, like the day in the life, I can't. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. I have no idea what's going to happen on Monday. And most of the time, every single day, I change my schedule for the week at least five times every single day. It's exciting. If you can't thrive in that, ain't the job for you. Right? You got to go and do something else because that's how fast and exciting, in my opinion, it is. We work hard and we play hard. I think having fun is a very key part of what we do. So I'm pretty sure every agency, but in OMD and PhD, we're trying to make it a little bit different. So what do you need? What do you need to develop now and to be successful? Of course, you need a sense of fun, but you also need to put your media sombrero on. Commitment and passion to learn are key. And I think that it permeates the media sombrero. It could be the creative sombrero, it could be the copywriting sombrero, it could be any sombrero really. It's all about the love and the passion to learn. I'll give you a couple of success tips because I picked them up along the way. I didn't find them written in a book, but from different people that affected my life positively, um, I, I just put them all together. First of all, remember that the only constant is change. And if you don't see change as an opportunity to thrive in it and embrace it, ain't going to go far. Second, learning has no end. And all of these people who are the know-it-all type of guys know nothing. And you're going to meet some of these in your life. These smart Alex who think they know the world. B.S. they don't. My favorite author, Alvin Toffler, said, the key to success is learn, unlearn, and relearn. And that's going to really determine literacy for the 21st century. Teamwork will be very key. It's going to piss the hell out of you because you're going to have the ones who are goofing off, the ones who do nothing, the ones who know it all, the ones who bulldoze everyone. You're going to have the ones who compromise. But no matter what, teamwork is going to be the key if you really want to succeed. Because at the end of the day, and he was absolutely right on the strategic presentation, the client is the king. We work for that. They pay the bills. And if we don't have teamwork, it's not going to really happen. You got to learn how to lead. You got to learn how to follow. And if you don't get the hell out of the way, one of the two will have to happen, right? And finally, attitude, IQ, and EQ really, really counts. I cannot stipulate that. I can control and I can mold your behavior when you join OMD or PhD. I can tell you anything I want on how to do on your job. Otherwise, you don't get your bonus or whatever else if I am a stupid dictator. Your attitude, your heart, your mind, I can never control. That is your passion. That is where love comes in. So attitude will count. I see a lot of people and a lot of young people who don't have that. Somebody said that a lot of, you know, some of the new ones, they think they know it all. I think it was shown. True. Some. Don't be one of them. Because they're not going to go far ahead, guys. Be humble from the very, very beginning. Expect to pay your dues. My brother-in-law, God bless him, 
he joined the heavens some years ago. He said, you put your head down, your ass up, and you work. You work. It's the work, the work, the work. Nothing else. And once you get that done and it's good, everything else will follow. Because we see a lot of that thing where I did a little bit. Okay, now I want money and promotion and everything else. And unfortunately, we compete with each other and we offer it. And that's not really doing you a favor. Expect to pay your dues, guys, and pay them well. Because it's going to give you experience. It's going to give you depth. Money will come. Guaranteed. Eileen said that and she's right. But the depth of the experience that will really take you from good to great comes only with hard work. Set high standards and high standards with honesty and integrity. They will drive you to where your vision is. You're going to come to the crossroads in your professional life a million times. What choices you're taking are going to determine if you're going to succeed or if you're not going to succeed. If you are guided by honesty and integrity to you as a person, when you see yourself in the mirror at night, you're going to make the right choices. And finally, if you don't compete, you cannot be competitive. And think globally. Because now you guys compete with the global village. Who is not Malaysian here out of you guys? Wow. See that? Right here. You want to get a job here in Malaysia? Yeah? You'll compete. That's the way it is. And you guys, the Malaysian ones, might find a job in other countries, in Asia Pacific or abroad, in Europe, States. You know how many people find employment in China? Please don't go. We need you here in Malaysia, okay? <laughs> Seriously. The good ones we keep. The not so good ones, let them go. Okay? Shh, don't say. Cut, cut, edit. <laughs> All right? But this is my pet peeve. No matter what you do, make darn sure you perfect your English. Okay? I see appalling resumes. I see appalling speech habits. And the fact is that we compete in the global arena. Right, Jeff? You get that damn thing right. No excuses, no compromise, zero tolerance. You really want to be good? Do that right. Do it right, guys. I see horrendous things. And they don't change. Let me tell you something. If I'm an employer and you're in the communication business, right? You write speeches, copy, ads. You communicate with people who are in the people business. I want you to be good at that. Why the hell would I hire you if you're not good at that? If you're a great communicator, you perfect that. Forget everything else I said. Okay, hypnotize again. And remember only this, okay? Perfect that because seriously, a big percentage of the graduates are not there. And it doesn't do you any good because I see smart people who cannot express it right. Especially when you go to the creative services, get it right. And last but not least, put that leader in you. You can. And even if you follow in your teams, you can be a leader. I'll give you the five Ps as I start gathering them, trailing down from Japan to Taiwan, and now in Malaysia. It's all about people, product, and profit. And at the same time, patience and persistence. If you fail, and you fail a hundred times, you're going to get back up and you're going to try again and you will never, never, never give up. Persistence and patience and putting people first. That's the business we are in. We are not really in the business of media and copywriting and, any, and, and digital and anything else. We are in the people business. And you got to put that first. Eventually, you guys are going to be the CEOs of the companies. We, the old farts, are going to be freaking dead by then. Sorry, but that's the nature of things. Hopefully, we're going to lead happy lives and, and live content. You are the rulers of the world. You are the next generation. And you got to remember that. Many times we forget that and we go to profit first. And it doesn't really work. So we are in the people business, yeah? You remember that. And you remember that everything happens and gets activated in that leadership mode in you because of the power of we. 
Nothing happens without the power of we. Your job will be to flip that M in me into W and make it we. Me to we. That's how you're going to really win the game. And finally, everywhere you go, take your PDA with you. God bless Jeff Lee. He's the MD of Panasonic Malaysia and a good friend and a philosopher as far as, uh, as, as, far as I'm concerned. He always tells me that wherever he goes, he's a good friend. He takes his PDA with him. He says, I'm taking a lot of passion, discipline, and action. Discipline is the toughest bit. Usually, especially the younger you are, the more passion you have, the more action you want to take. But if you don't put that discipline to guide that and guide you in that process, you ain't going to succeed. If you are like that fire, hot, burning fireball, you will have two choices. Either you will let it burn along the way and destroy things, or it's going to shoot up and be a great star that is going to shine bright. If you put that discipline into passion and action, that is going to happen, and you are going to go places and set the world on fire. Thank you.